Hi everybody, welcome to this brand new edition of Begs Banter, brought to you by Saltire Energy, the global market leader in specialist drilling equipment, rental, torquing, testing, refurbishment and welding. And also for my friends at Lux Scott, a jet class luxury vehicle company. If you're looking to travel to an event in style, please look the guys up. Hi everybody, a very warm welcome to this brand new edition of Begs Banter. If you're watching for the first time, hi, welcome. If you like what you watch, please feel free to subscribe. This is where I basically interview ex-Aberdeen players about their time at the football club. And I really hope you enjoy today's watch. Today, we're talking to a cult hero. It is Doug Rugby. Doug is an Aberdeen cult hero. He played a total of 279 games for the club, scoring 21 goals. He won seven major honours. I was absolutely delighted to have caught up with him from his home in Aberdeenshire for my latest edition of Begs Banter. Hi Doug, it's great to see you. Thank you so much for jumping on Begs Banter with me this evening. I would like to take you back to the early days. When you first joined Aberdeen, did you always play at the back? Uh, well, <coughs> uh, when, when I first when I first joined uh, Aberdeen, it's, it's a long it's a, it's a long answer. I first joined Aberdeen. It was nineteen seventy two, and it was farmed out. I was on the ground stuff, and I got farmed out. I was on the ground stuff with um, uh, a late uh, one of my late uh, pals that died just recently, um, uh, Jim George, and uh, an ad chap called John Harder. So three of the ground stuff, you know, they sort the ground stuff, looking after the kits and boots and cleaning the dressing rooms and making sure everybody's happy, you know. And uh, so they, then they, they, they farmed us out to um, farmed us farmed us out to me to a junior side called Rosemount. It's mm. defunct now, but um, that was my first sort of sort of um, introduction to Aberdeen, Aberdeen's uh, football scene, you know. Okay. So yeah. So where did you yeah, play? So what, um, what position did you play? I was playing playing centre half. I played centre half for. Uh, played. I was playing centre half for uh, Rosemount. Um. After I had a season at Rosemount, right? So I was, I was, um, so I was offered forms, offered a form of signing on form, right? So seventeen, I signed for form. But oh, oh, then again, I they, they could sign you early doors, sixteen or more. But uh, seventeen, of, maybe they just want to have a look at, but uh, look at me first, see what I was going to be doing. But I'm not going to be doing so, and, and I signed a contract when I was seventeen, and then the farm out the Highland League. Okay, I was Keith. Keith Football Club with family up to. Um, initially we went we went well. In fact, it was my first senior medal was with was with, with Keith, but I was playing I was for them was playing midfield, you know, because the the two the two central central backs I was playing sort of midfield and inside the uh, uh, but in the mid days it was an inside left uh, position, you know. So, um, but I never lasted there long because, of, as I say, my first um, senior medal was in the High League Cup. We beat, um, I think we beat Bros County in the final up at Elgin. And uh, and then he stopped playing me for, for whatever reason, you know. And I went to the, I went to the boss who was Jimmy Bonter at the time and I said to him, Look, I'm not going back there because he's not playing me. I should be playing, you know. So, um, so then he called me up to the reserves. And then the reserves were split in a half. So it was. Back in centre and half, and uh, and then I did really well. Uh, in centre and half, and in the seventy four, I went on a we went on a on a trip to um, to um, Australia, a world tour with Aberdeen Football Club. We went for five weeks. It was a fantastic time. I was had my eighteenth birthday in Newcastle, and in, in Australia, so it was a fan, it was a fantastic trip. But when I was playing, I was playing centre and a half uh, for the. The reserves. I was playing again. I went into play midfield uh, for for the games uh, for the games and the games we had. I think we had seven or eight games. You know, so we played in played in Tirana, and then we played in um, played in Perth, over to Sydney, up to Newcastle, uh, over down to Auckland, 
then over in New Caledonia. So we played around about seven or eight games, you know. So I was playing, I was playing a midfield road. I think I was playing central, either right midfield or central midfield. I can't really remember. And the reason I was getting a game, I was just I was just there to, to carry the to carry the um carry the luggage, the 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 but carry the hampers, you know. Oh, really? But because the boys <laughs> because the boys were they were it's like a they were it's like bands in a sweet shop. No, we for the waves. They 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 are putting them in the pocket and root baby. It was like so they were the fit they fit to play. So I was getting a game, you know. It was great. So it was. Can I just was, ask? Uh, can I ask? When, when you were trying to to break into Aberdeen's first team during this period, sort of in the mid seventies, did you always know that you would have to have a level of patience to be able to break in? Yeah, well, it wasn't, it wasn't exactly it wasn't exactly that. I was uh, I was I was um, quite delighted um, playing away in the reserves, okay, and getting getting experience and uh, making a, one or two appearances for the first team. You know, uh, I, I, I was I was on a I was on a great team. You know, I, I, I escaped from a quaint little mining village in, in Fife called Belingry, and I managed to get I managed to escape for that. You know, so the thing is when I when I came up with Jimmy Bonson, um uh, come to invite me up to the uh, come to the house to invite me up to Aberdeen when I was when I was sixteen. I was um, I was I had, I had, a, I had a job in the in the in the dockyard, right? Mm-hmm. And I said, "Well, oh, come up, I'll come up to do the the the, the, the places and the, the the stuff on the on the ground stuff and whatnot." But I'm wanting day release, so that day release gave me a day at college at Aberdeen College for. Um, for mechanical engineering, okay, you know, so I was, I was, I was, I had, I had the best of it, or other worlds, the best worlds, you know. I was still I had my fit, and just in case I failed with with the football, I could still go and get a job uh, in a in a in a place like a dockyard or a, some sort of mechanical. Um, um, I was, I was, I was, I was having a great time in Aberdeen, so I was, you know, so I was. So when Sir Alex arrived. That's when everything started to change for you. You started to play regular. Yeah, well, well, before Alec, before Alec, before Alec came arrived, the the Bontron who would left, then McLeod came in. Yeah, you know, mm. and then McNeil came in. Yeah, <laughs> so so I survived. I survived four managers before <laughs> before uh, Fergie came in. So well, it moved. You know, I was like when Fergie came in, I was just I was just primed to go and and get into the first team. Full, full time, you know. I was, I was up for it. Just not to be married. I just, just got married, and I'm, just, I'm just, I was just ready for it, you know. So I was. Um, how did you personally cope? Um, I'm quite interested to know from your own sort of psychological point of view, Doug. How did you cope with what was the injustice of being sent off in that League Cup final in the late seventies against Rangers? The, the thing is, it was, it was, it was. Um, it was a big game. It was a big game for us, you know. Fairly just come and it was the first, the first final we were there. Uh, so I think I was I was in the team. I was doing really well playing centre and a half, you know. And uh, I'm really enjoying it, you know. But uh, but getting sent off was it was a big a major learning curve for us, you know. You know, it really was a big a big uh, thing for us. And and I think the thing was that the um, that. Uh, a lot of people think that the Aberdeen uh, Rangers um, 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 sort of rivalry, uh, rivalry um, was um, uh, that, that that started it. Um, I was John Hatter, his father, uh, Jackie Hatter, played for Aberdeen when the first one when the league in um, 1955. I think it was right, and and after we uh, we won the, the league, we had, had had a dinner with him, and he says, "Fucking night, oh, sorry, excuse me, Prince." The Rangers were always a team that Aberdeen disliked intensely. You know, just I was just I was just history, you know, and it wasn't just me getting sent off against Johnson and the other things that's happened. You know, um, Durant getting injured from uh, at Pedodri and. And things like that. It's always been nitty gritty with the Rangers mm. for whatever reason. Okay, 
let's begin with some of these quick fire questions for you. So I've got three to begin yeah. with. So what was the first club car that you were given? I've never had a club car. Really? You've never had a club <laughs> never, car? Never had a club car. <laughs> no way. Apart from, apart from when I went up to High and League in Huntley, uh, I was a player manager and then folks trying to give me a, a, a car for going back and forth with. Really? No way. Never had a, never had a club car with Albany Football Club or with wow. Chelsea or with Brighton. Oh, we feel them. Oh, we don't feel them. Really, I. That, that, that was that was unhealthy. That was unhealthy when I was playing. So well, it was club be, cars. You better not speak to uh, Hans Hillhouse and these guys then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Who did you room with on away trips? Who would the room? Oh, initially, I was uh, rooming with Andy Watson. Okay. Uh, Andy Watson, he was uh, uh, he was uh, he was instrumental in, in us winning the league in, in the nineteen eighty, uh, and after that, but he was still with, with us until um, well, I was on the bench at the at the at the Cup Winners Cup, and he was his last game was he came on he came on he came on for me as, as subby in the Scottish Cup final in nineteen eighty three, you know, so after. After Fergie, I guess I did. Yeah, <laughs> so he did. left after that. So after after Andy had left, I was I was um, I was sort of a uh, lumber with 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 Stuart McKinney. Okay. What can you remember? What you spent your first bonus on? Oh yeah, oh yeah, big time. Yeah. Uh, it was we were, the boys used to get their all their clothes made up at um, up at a a, 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 a tailor's in George Street. Just right across the road from Marquis, and it's gone now. But uh, that was it. Uh, but, but what was that on the suit? Yeah, brilliant. What colour? Uh, no, you're asking. <laughs> I, 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 I was dead real. I mean, the first day of that day, I had a few. Um, so just, just in time for to meet the wife. Very nice. First suit, lovely. Okay, let's talk about your style, the way that you play. Was it always? an intention to put the fear of God into your immediate opponent? I think, um, I think, yeah, I was, I, I, I consider myself as a, a journeyman. I always be a journeyman. I'm not, um, I'm, Aberdeen had special players, you know, like say, Weir, Strachan, um, um, Black, um, you know, people who could score goals, you know, and I've always felt I, I was a journeyman, you know, and uh, and I, I thought I, I felt always thought I was I'm lucky to play the Aberdeen Football Club, you know. So yeah, yeah. So all right, I think you're doing yourself a slight injustice because yeah. when you know when you peel everything. Back, I, was, I think I think I, I think when you when you're um, when you're. I, I always, I always thought, as I say, I always thought this was self as a journeyman, but um, you have to take it as much advantage as you can, you know, because um, I was quick, I was big, I was, I was quite aggressive, you know. I used that to my, to my favour, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Okay, so because that brings me nicely onto the next question. So the games against Celtic at Parkhead, where the old jungle was. So obviously, um, you used to go out, and you used to warm up in front of what was a very hostile jungle. Um, was that premeditated or was it just natural instinct that you decided that to was, do such a thing? I think I think I think initially when I, I went through and warmed up, I was getting a reaction from big time. I thought, this is great. This. <laughs> I'm winding these boys up big time, you know? So I thought, oh yeah, I'll, I'll continue to do this. And, and it was just a thing I did, I always did it. The, the fans expect me to do it, so I went there and uh, give them a, some, some of the shout at the early doors before the, game, before the game kicked off. Did you thrive on that? Oh yeah, definitely. I think, I think um, he, he, motivation-wise, that was brilliant for me. Mm. You know, getting all these people shouting at you was just magnificent. So it was. You know, it was. <laughs> Thank you. Know, when did you first start to realise that with the group of players that you were playing with and Sir Alex Ferguson at the helm, 
when did you first start to think we've got something quite special here? Yeah, it was initially when it came, it was um, uh, all I could um, do was speak about um, St. Mung. Mm. And I thought, well, he's trying to wind this up, is he? He's trying to get us. <laughs> It's trying to get us going, you know, because there's, there's no way that Superb were any, no, man for man, apart from Peter Beer, obviously, uh, man for man, they were, they were, so they were second rate to us big time, you know, at least, I would say, he started pretty well and stuff. But when we, when we went and on that run and, and, and won the league in, the, in 1980, you know, you know, I think, yeah, yeah I think we've got on that, onto a, onto a winner here, definitely. Okay, I want to talk about the, the Bayern Munich game. So let's skip ahead to the Bayern Munich game. At Pataudry, the 3-2 game. So after John scored, there is the, the, the pictures, the television cameras focus on you guys all jumping on top of each other and celebrating with John. But there is a... The, what I love about it is you're giving it large to who I think is Klaus Augenthaler, obviously their, their centre-back. Am I correct in saying that you were giving it to him big time? Yeah, yeah, I was, I was actually. Okay, what, why? Well, the, the thing is, we could never, we'd never beat our German side before. You know, the Germans used to come over, come over to us and, and we would think, fucking Germans again, you know. <laughs> we're going to end up getting beat. And, then, and they always beat us. They always, they always said they beat us. You know, and the year before I was playing, I think it was a, uh, uh, I think it was a, I can't remember what it was called when I was called, but the year before, or two years before, um, um, it was Hamburg came in and we did really well against them. You know, I, I, I had them on knee that night and, and got taken off. And uh, and they always seemed to be sitting like the guys are doing, you know, and I'm thinking, oh. so it, was, it always seemed to be beating us through throughout the, the, the years. Since I was 72, I was there rather than what in Europe. The Germans always seemed to just give us a pippin, you know, but when we went three to up, I was thinking, oh, what a chance we've got here, you know, and uh, it was, yeah, that was it. It was pure, it was so much relief that we've got, to, we're maybe going to get a result of them, you know, mm -hmm. and the, when that, when that, they were, they were gone, they were goosed, so they were, because we're quite a minute they left, left, left the play and, and, uh, and really, they never told us, you know. Mm. Fergie was panicking. I think one of the views he's seen, he never really had a, a match, a, a, a ball winner in midfield because they put Spam at the full back. I went out the right back. And um, I never really had somebody do But they never told us to pass. So when I saw that their goal, they were, they were absolutely gone. They were spent. So they were. So it's just a matter of us just, um, just um, finishing the game yeah. that, that last quarter right there. Yeah. Okay, so for the Cup Winners' Cup final, is it true that you nearly missed the game? Well, I think I never really missed it, but um, we were, we were um, the game, the game uh, was played early doors against um, Kamarnock. Mm. It was played midweek, so we could have the Saturday off. And uh, of course, I was, I, was on, I was on my push bike at the time. Your, your bicycle. Because Push bike, I was on, on a push bike. I was on a push bike, I was on a bike um, going on back and forth to Petersburg because I, I, I did, there was a, a, I bought it for um, repairing a, a, a Achilles, Achilles injury I had okay. on one of the pre seasons, you know. So, so I just got in the habit of using the bike. So, I was um, we were doing it and Saturday morning, we were doing um, then doing a wee bit on, on the park. Uh, and then jumped the bike and was going home and I was I was going turning up um, to Drive and uh, I said uh, I, I gravel the, the where cars did they go you know I had a bit of gravel and just came away from it and I and I, I done it I hurt my hurt my I think it was my my hip I think I did I, I fell on my hip and hurt my hip and I'm thinking oh no I'm, I'm going to be struggling here you know but I never I never let one I did it, you know, because you know what Fergie's like. He's, you know, <laughs> at least he gains a bear, you know. So, so you didn't tell him that you fell off your bike. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh no! No way! <laughs> My so I think, God. Could you I think, I think with the sun, with it, 
I think we, we had the Sunday off and we, we trained the Monday and then we, 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 we sort of flew on the Monday afternoon. So we'd have to choose the Wednesday to, to get ourselves organised for the for the game, you know. So so we kept that we kept that quiet. Kept that quiet. Good for you. Good move. <laughs> right. I have a very simple question for you. What was more nervous for you? The closing stages of the Bayern Munich game at Petodre or the closing stages of the Real Madrid game in the final? Well, the, uh, as I said, I've already answered that one already, but uh, the, the Bayern Munich, they were, they were, well, they were gone. They were, weren't a threat to us at all. Okay. You know, there wasn't a threat to us at all. They, 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 had, they had imploded. As soon as that third goal went in, and we just couldn't believe that we could score three goals against them. And it was just, just, just against all the, all the, all, all, all the, everything that they believed in, you know? Yeah. You thought the Scottish boys are, so your answer's Real Madrid. <laughs> oh, Real Madrid, no, that was different, completely different, yeah. What, what, so especially how, when, especially when, when Big Miller gave that foul away, the did he? On the edge of the box. <laughs> edge of the box, what a knock to it. He'd be wanting to call me for a break, so he won't. <laughs> what a did he, what is he like? <laughs> <laughs> so, let's talk about that moment. So, were you standing in the wall? Were you no, in the I wall? No, I was. I was. I was in the wall. Okay. I was in the wall. I was. I was. I was on the right hand side, um, looking for anything going out or the top of the wall for runners. Okay. You know? So I was just thrown. I was thrown, and I was in the line of the wall, but I was thrown that space. Anybody running, you know? So yeah. I'm like, that's a look at Big Lane, look at him. He's like Bobby Clark. He's got it. He's like we. <laughs> I just passed the post well first. Oh, gee. Um, when oh, you lifted the Cup Winners' Cup, um, obviously it's it's just a fabulous moment when all the boys lift it. But when you lift it, you do this little sort of jump for joy. It, it, can you try? I know it's a long time ago. You know, it's nearly forty years now. But can you explain your emotions at full time? <sighs> Coming up for 40 years, it's crazy, is it? Eh? Yeah. I'm looking at myself in the mirror here and it's a bit of slap hidden in the, in the bags <laughs> in their eyes and I've got the grey hair and grey hair there and my, there my, there my chin and I'm thinking, yeah, it's 40 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, what, what, can, what can you say? What can you say? It's just, um, we're just ecstatic, was it? I was the, that was the, that was the going to be in the, that wasn't supposed to be the, the, what happened. So I was I was beating El Madrid, she's all, yeah. how dare us? Yeah, exactly. Just ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. Love it. How dare we? Yes. <laughs> I love that. How dare we? Um, right. I'd like to talk, you, you kind of alluded to it earlier. Let's talk about the rant, the famous Sir Alex Ferguson rant after oh. the 83 Scottish Cup final. So when did you first hear about that interview? And what were your thoughts on it? Well, you have to you have to understand. Just coming off the back of the the cup of this cup, right? And we were we were so high it was we were getting scraped off the scraped off the roof. We played the hips in the side. They beat the hips five five nil, you know. Mm. And the uh, first thing I've ever been clapped on, onto the park by an air team. Hips are getting assists. Well done, lads. Well done, lads. <laughs> well, that's Fuck sake, what's going on here? You know? So they were, so that we we for, for the collapse of the park, we gave them give them five. And uh, and so and and after that we just we just we sort of we imploded bad it anyway. I couldn't I couldn't have run the length of myself, you know. Yeah. We're trying to get, we always went to the Scottish Cup, we always went to Woodside and personally uh, to do the were training. And boys, the parks were pumping the park. The parts was brick hard, it was bumpy. And to me, uh, I was the knee, uh, I was what I was just what I going on the real I was. And it's through a terrible playing in the Scottish Cup final and, and we're thinking, oh Jesus, you know, I'm what I go away, I'm what I go away, I go to my Yorker from, from lying on a bit. And um, but we were, we were played so many games, you know, and they and and Fergie was still pushing us still try to press for buttons and it was just, it just wasn't happening, you know. Couldn't kick us to the backside, you know. 
We just couldn't, couldn't run, couldn't play. And we, were, and we were all like that, everyone, yes, you know. And uh, ended up beating them, beating them 1 0 in extra time. And I glad to score the header, semi shot, and thing with that was. Uh, uh, I was I was I was after party at the time. I was I was sitting on the bench because I got the hook and quite deservedly too. And uh, you know, but we, we just when they said double Aberdeen won a cup double, you know, I just didn't hear it, you know. And uh, we were we were delighted after the game. We were delighted, but we got our medals and we were running the park, moved to the park with the, the supporters, and this, the supporters were saying that we're like this. Oh yeah, yeah, you were shite, but you've won. We were delighted with you, you know. And we went in the dressing room, mate, right? and uh, and we were ready to make, open the champagne. And, and Archie says to us, "Don't bother opening that. He's out there giving you dogs abuse for your performance." And you know, and I'm thinking, oh, no, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just you know, you know. And uh, it was disappointing. It really was. Yeah, and then he came in and, and blasted us. Uh, it was, it was really, it was, it was sad. <laughs> it was because the day, the reason they did, you know, but just the, you just couldn't help yourself. That's the way it is. Mm. And uh, when, so, so, um, go ahead. So we, so we, so we went back there. So we got to England, and, the, and the, the wives were sitting, and the wives came in the bus with us, and we were like, "That's for fuck's sake." Yeah, but the yard. That's what we were thinking. So we got back there. <laughs> we got back to the hotel. We were staying at the the old course hotel, and it's the first time we've been there. That was a beautiful place, you know. So they had they had a, a big ballroom was set up and the cups there, and everybody's there, you know. And then we had the meal, we had the, the speeches and that. And then all of a sudden, everybody disappeared. Gordon took all his pals away, them to wait, 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 and deep. And everybody's like, "This, I'm just staying here." <laughs> so. So at the end of the night, so at the end of the night, I'm with this. Just like about to go in, you know. So they all they like disappeared. So we were at the end of the night. Everybody disappeared. I'm going wherever was. This was empty. It was me, the wife, and the Scottish cop, and that was it. And there was, we can't leave the Scottish cop here. I'll just take it. We'll take up to the bit, up to the room, right? So we got, I got, I got the, Brendan got the cup, and I got the base and took up the room, us. <laughs> So you ever had a free song ever at Scottish Cup? <laughs> we didn't <laughs> did that before. <laughs> so Ben is getting a funny day at the Scottish Cup and he did things like that. So um, it's early in the morning, of course, in the morning, panic, then he came in the Scottish Cup is. <laughs> somebody's somebody's half in the Scottish Cup. I realised, what happened? We've been a little left. Somebody's told that. <laughs> So I did. I did a lot for the Scottish Cup. Okay, brilliant. So, but, um, but the but Fergie Fergie ruined that ruined that health thing for us. So he did. It was just it was so disappointing. And um, I think um, I think that's what one of his biggest lessons he ever le learned uh, when he went to Man United. So I think that the, that um, sort of um, sort of behaviour set him in good stead for the Man United job. So I did. Right, I'm just unfortunate we had just fortunate we had to get yeah. Right, we don't have very long left. So I've right, got one okay. last question for you before we do the final round of quick fire questions. So do you have any regrets from your time at Aberdeen? Um uh, I regret I regret leaving Aberdeen Football Club. I really did. All right, let's uh, finish because we, we, we haven't got very long, Doug. So let's finish with the last three quick fire questions. So, right, okay. which, which player in training did you hate playing against in small sided games? Um, I think it was Pierre Weir because he would, uh, he'd, he'd keep doing big time, so he would, okay. you know. Okay. So <laughs> you scored in your time at Aberdeen, you scored 21 goals for the club. What That's not a bad your, player for back, is it? Not bad at all, Phil. <laughs> Who's your favourite? Um, it must be um, the one I scored against Rangers. Um, it was one neat, well, not me at the time, and sure they had the ball on the far side, it cleared him and he knocked it in. And I came in, just it in, and, and, and fired it into the beach end. Yeah. Past big, uh, the guy in the house, Big McCloy. Yeah. And, uh, and then after that, I went up and gave the Rangers. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> Hope for after the score. So that was quite fun. Okay, last <laughs> question. Who was the best Aberdeen player that you played with? Aberdeen, Aberdeen player, uh, Peter Weir. Easy. Yeah? Peter Weir, yeah. Peter Weir, two answers, yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Definitely. Doug, fantastic player. It's been fantastic talking to you. Thank you so much for spending half an hour with me. And um, hopefully we will see each other soon and we will catch up again. Thank you so much. Okay. Look at yourself, son. Bye, mate. Bye-bye. There we are. The magnificent Doug Rugby. I'm just going to leave you with a thought. This is Kevin Sterling's centenary book when Aberdeen celebrated 100 years. And there is a team photograph, but one player dons the front cover. It's Doug Rugby. I think that tells you everything you need to know. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the latest edition of Beg's Banter and I'll see you again very soon. Take care. Bye for now.